Hey everyone and welcome to yet another video blog by Day-to-Day -Day Dynamics 365. So on this video, we're going through a business requirement of a fellow Dynamics 365 customer engagement consultant, Mr. Kim from the US. Now he had, like I said, he had a business requirement uh, where he had to basically accomplish uh, a feat that, that enables him to mark a contract as completed. Now out of, the, out of the box, the contract status reasons that we have are draft in review and on hold. And we can confirm a contract, but that doesn't really, you know, that doesn't really close it. So on this video, let's go through the, uh, we'll go through the customization steps and then we'll go through some testing to validate what actually happens when a project contract is, is closed. So I'm just going to kind of, you know, walk through the steps and, uh, you know, if we see some, uh, if, you see, if we see s the system freezing and, and something not happening as it should, just, you know, kind of, just kind of bear with me. So let's, uh, let's just kind of go through this, this together. So to get started, first thing, what we'll do is we'll open the form editor and we'll see a, uh, we'll, we'll see the business rules that we have here on the order entity. And there's a business rule called set status based on status reason. So let's take a look at that. All right, so here on this business rule, we can see that contract status reason equals completed, lost, abandoned, then set contract status to closed. And that's essentially what we want to do. So to get there, what we'll do is we'll take a look at the contract status reason field. So let's see what the properties of this field are like. We have this, uh, the option set values here. So let's look at the label completed and its value. So keep this in mind because next what we're doing is we're we're opening up some JavaScript that we have here on this form. So let's go to form properties and let's open up this. Let's try to get this tool tip to get highlighted. Here we go. Let's open up this uh, JavaScript right here. And scrolling down, we can see that we have some strings of JavaScript that are related to those uh, option set values. And what I've done is I've, I've copy pasted one of these lines right here and added that value and changed the default completed status reason to equal the, the, the value that we had on the option set that we just took a look at. And here, right down here, I've also copy pasted one of these lines and then just change the defaults dot completed status reason equals true. So this is what gets that option of completed on this option set. So now that we've done that, the next thing for us to do is to validate that it actually works. So this um, this option of, of, of marking a contract as closed was initially on on uh, be, being dealt with, was it, it was initially being developed by the product group, but it was kind of put on hold for, for other more important matters. So that's why we can see uh, that, that we have, you know, these fields and these possibilities in PSA. Uh, they've just not been implemented yet uh, in, in, in the product, but we can leverage that. So next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at time entries, actuals, and, in, and invoicing, and see what happens if we close this product, uh, this product contract. Now, I do recommend that you do some additional testing in your de uh, in your development environment because I would um, I, I I will say that this isn't a supported PSA scenario to close the project contract. Uh, you know, kind of looking at from the eyes of of of, of uh, how the system is built, uh, but it's it is possible to do it. But again, I I do suggest that before you implement this in your system, do some testing in your dev and actually make sure that it works. Uh, all right. So let's let's uh, jump into testing next. So I have some confirmed time entries for this specific project contract. And 
what I'm going to do next is I'm going to confirm this contract. So it's confirmed. So let's then refre uh, refresh this form to get that lock to disappear. Here we go. Then I'm gonna create an invoice. So this will pull those time entries that are approved on an invoice that we have. All right, so we have an invoice. So then let's come back to our project contract. And now let's mark this project contract as completed and then see what happens when we confirm that draft invoice that we have. So we have a uh, confirm project contract. Let's mark it as completed. The status changes to closed. I'm just gonna refresh this uh, form just in case to see that that nothing happens behind the scenes and it's actually closed. It is, all right. So now what we can do is we can go on that invoice that we have. Let's open that up. And mark this as confirmed. All right, the invoice is confirmed. Let's check what our actuals look like. So we have a build sales actual and we have those reversed actuals as well. So time to jump back on the project contract. And let's see what our contract performance looks like. So the contract performance has increased. So we had, we confirmed our contract, we created an invoice, we then closed our contract and then marked our invoice as, uh, then confirmed our invoice. So despite us having a closed project contract and, an, and a draft invoice confirming our draft invoice actually does, you know, it does get pulled into our, our uh, project contract figures to, uh, to the build amount figures right here. So next what we'll do is as we have a status of closed uh, project contract, let's look at our time entries. So we have some additional time entries here that I'm gonna approve. And then, let, then let's look at uh, the utilization if, if we have any effect on that. So actually let's take a quick look here. Our utilization is right now it's uh, 37. Let me actually refresh this just in case. It is 62, so I had some previous, uh, previous time entries here. So it's 62. And now let's approve these time entries and verify what happens with actuals and then what happens with utilization. So the actuals get created just fine. Let's look at utilization. And the utilization gets updated as well. So I am able to create time entries and increase my utilization against this project contract despite it being closed. All right, so now we do have a small problem. We have approved time entries. We have a closed project contract and we're missing the create invoice button on the ribbon. So what we're doing is we're changing this back to draft, saving our changes, and we're getting that create invoice button right here. So I'm gonna create a new invoice for those time entries that I had. And, pro and the problem is solved. Now we can actually do this uh, step again, kind of just in case to see that everything works as intended. So let's come back on the project contract again, 
confirm it and then mark it as completed again. So let's just call this double verification. And then let's mark that as completed. Then I'm gonna refresh it just in case to see that it's it actually is completed. It is, yeah, it's completed with the status of closed. So let's come back to that invoice and let's confirm that invoice again. I wonder which one it was. Nope, that was, that's not it. Here we go. So the actuals, Still look good. We have a uh, customer invoice created as as a billing status ID, just as it should. Let's confirm this. Let's check our check our actuals. We had that billed sales, and let's verify our project contract or our our contract performance, we have build sales increased. So now that we have a closed contract, an additional test that we can do is to credit these invoices and see what happens then. So I can just pick either one of these, uh, either one of these confirmed invoices and just click on correct this invoice. And let's just confirm it right away. Then let's take a look at our actuals. We can see that the adjustments have gone through just as they should have. And now basically the actuals are back in the system. So if we want to get them invoiced, what we'd have to do is just, you know, change this contract status reason back to, to draft and then just click on create invoice again or, or run batch jobs. And as you can see, the credited invoice is now seeing it's it's being, it was deducted from the build amount. So our build amount is back to a hundred as it should be. So from this, we can gather that uh, a project contract with a status of closed does allow us to submit time entries to approve them, to approve them and, uh, and to confirm uh, draft invoices without really you know, seeing any, any drastic effects on, on, on the project contract. Now, like I said, I do recommend that you do some additional testing. Based on this, I would say that, that marking a project contract as completed so that we get a status of closed is a valid approach. But, but in any case, I would still do additional testing before implementing this in a production environment. So I hope you've enjoyed this brief video and uh, you know, Hit, hit me up with some questions uh, on, on my blog. Uh, if you have any questions or, or you know, regards to the you know, con configuration or, or, or customization, or if you, you know, if you do find some, some odd things around this functionality, please do, do post those on my blog and uh, let's kind of pick it up from there. So thanks again and have a good one.